Back when I was a small kid, one of my dream professions was being a pirate. Of course, as far as I knew, they only sailed the seas, looked for treasure chests filled with heavy gold coins, fought with swords and sang merry songs while sailing in epic scenery. In this game, you play as a guy who's gotten that dream job, literally. Your character is tasked with researching genetic memories using a highly advanced device called the Animus, kind of a super authentic virtual reality setup. When he logs into the device, he is able to take over the actions of a certain Edward Kenway, a pirate who lived in the 18th century. This would be so cool, just don on the Animus gear and jump in the clear blue waters. Look at the amazing craftsmanship of these mighty sea vessels and take in the stunning visuals of the island landscapes. But Helen Buckshot, Captain Kenway was no mere explorer. He got into trouble all the time. Prepare for resounding cannon fire, cutlass clashing, rum-soaked, short-tempered pirates and their wild and unpredictable life in the tropical, delirium-inducing heat under the Caribbean sun. There was a challenge in selecting which Assassin's Creed game to pick as the highest ranking choice for this top 100 list. There's just so many good ones. It ultimately came down to either Assassin's Creed 2 or this one, and 18th century Caribbean events and scenery are more interesting to me than those of the 15th and 16th century Italy. Close call though. I also didn't want the top 100 list to have a heap of back-to-back -back Assassin's Creed titles, so this will serve as the flagship for the franchise. You get it? You get it? Okay, I'll cut it out. Sure, these days there's lots of game worlds that are humongous, but this was staggeringly huge back when it came out. Open waters can be sailed to reach places like Kingston, Havana, Nassau, not to mention the innumerable smaller islands that hold a dizzying amount of collectibles and secrets. The sailable area would take about 15 minutes to sail from end to end at full blast speed, so you can imagine how many discoverable locales fit into the game area. If you really want to get that collector mode on and complete the game up to 100%, better make plans for dozens of hours of free time to play this game. I mean, the campaign took me less than 20 hours to complete, but I only got around 45% of the game done. The game starts you off with a schooner, but your main vessel will be a brig. You'll get to upgrade its hull, cannons, crew and cargo capacity, as well as the looks of it. This game's been widely praised for its ship combat and sailing mechanics, and for a good reason. How's this for some pepper? Feels amazing, man. Ship combat is pretty straightforward, one-on-one. -on -one. Keep up your speed to outmaneuver the enemy. The main thing is not to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and trade broadside after broadside of cannonballs. It's a good way to get your ship pounded to splinters, especially early on before you have enough upgrades. Circle around and keep your side cannons targeted at the enemy ship's back or front. There's also heavy cannons, which have really low range but large damage. Later on you also get the mortar, which has huge range, huge damage, but it's very slow to reload and has limited ammo. If all else fails, you can always ram the enemies with your ship, but you also take some damage in the process. There's a way to reduce incoming damage by telling your crew to brace for impact. This also reduces incoming cannon fire and collision damage, so mastering when to use it is crucial. It's relatively easy to do all of this with just one regular opponent, but how about 5 or even 10 ships coming after you? It's important to try and keep all of your enemies' locations and directions in the back of your mind, or else you might end up getting side-ramped by a ship you forgot to keep in check. There are even these forts to conquer, some with patrolling ships buzzing around them. These fights can get really hectic because the firepower these forts possess is massive. All ships carry a variety of materials, of which some make good profit if sold, and others are used as materials to upgrade your ship. You are a pirate after all, so you can make a point of boarding every ship you come across and stealing their cargo if you really want to. This increases the chance of pirate hunters coming after you as your wanted level rises, and they can be really tough to sink.
Once you board an enemy ship and win a fight with their crew, you can press the enemy captain into submission and add their ship to your very own fleet. It's sort of a mini game you can play which gives you money and materials. It's kind of optional, I didn't find it too engaging so this time I decided to skip it entirely. As a result though, I had much fewer upgrades towards the end of the game. As you see from this shipboarding material, moving on and off the ship is seamless. It's a cool feeling to just climb up the ships, and an even cooler feeling to kick peoples down off of them. Get off the ship, matey! You can also visit any shore you'd like, and when you're done just climb back aboard and continue sailing. Being out on sea has a magical mood to it. It gets quiet, except for the waves and the wind. That's when the crew might raise a song. Now you're ready to sail for the horn. There's a certain cinematic quality to it all. For example, I love it when the singing stops just as you hear the distant blasts of mortars firing at your ship. As if the crew also at that same second realizes, Blast it, we're in trouble! Snap too! Another time when your crew is well awake and focused is when you're caught in a storm. There's water spouts that mess up your steering and inflict terrible damage, as well as rogue waves that deal critical amounts of damage unless you meet them head on and brace for impact. Any of these can occur during any moment, such as when you're taking down a fort. As if there wasn't enough trouble already! A large part of the game will be spent in port towns and on islands, masquerading as an assassin. Exploring is fascinating because there's just so much detail in everything and so many awesome views. And speaking of detail, the music has been designed beautifully to make you feel immersed in the plot and surroundings. Whenever I listen to the soundtrack, I'm reminded of the game's characters and events, increasing its nostalgic factor. I love it. Movement is pretty smooth, allowing you to navigate the towns and terrain with relative ease, although sometimes your character disagrees on where you're pointing him to go. Sometimes being unsmooth can lead to hilarity. As you journey onwards, you'll have to master the art of espionage, stealth, takedowns, and in case you get spotted, sword fighting. You'll have an assortment of assassin gadgets as well, like smoke bombs, rope blades, a blowpipe with tranquilizer darts, and a whole bunch of really slow reloading pistols. The melee combat is made even more fun by the unpredictable nature of movement in this game. It allows for some creative ways of taking down your opposition. I'd have to say the combat is a tad bit easier than in other Assassin's Creed games. Let's just say I didn't feel too bad about causing an alarm and turning a neat stealth mission into a bloody rumble every once in a while. If you end up dying, you become desynced, which means you just have to load a safe checkpoint from your virtual experience, so to speak. Usually not much progress is lost. This is another one of those games where there would still be a plethora of gameplay mechanics and assorted things left to mention. There's tailing missions where you'll be eavesdropping for information, underwater diving missions searching for lost treasures, and even sections where you walk around without your virtual reality set hacking into computers and such in modern times. The main reason why this game ended up in my top 100 list is, well, just take a look.
it's just got so much action packed into it and it all looks so damn good. The game and its story have plenty of humor in it, but the characters have also been designed with a serious mind and effort. This game's got style. Well, until I manage to get my hands on a real-life Animus with a pirate experience available, I'll keep coming back to this game whenever I hear the call of the open seas.